AC 470 Athens Greece D 399 BC Athens Socrates was a Greek philosopher whose way of life, character, and thought exerted a profound influence on ancient and modern philosophy. Although Socrates himself wrote nothing, he is portrayed in conversation in 29.7. Socrates seven compositions by a small circle of his admirers, the most important of whom was his student Plato. In Plato's dialogues, Socrates appears as a man of great insight, integrity, self-mastery, and argumentative skill life and personality. Although the sources provide only a small amount of information about the life and personality of Socrates, a unique and vivid picture of him shines through particularly in some of the works of Plato. W. E. know the names of his father, Sophroniscus, probably a stonemason, his mother, Phineret, and his wife, Zan, Ip, and we know that he had three sons. In Plato's Gitetus, Socrates likens his way of philosophizing to the occupation of his mother who was a midwife, not pregnant with ideas himself, he assists others with the delivery of their ideas though they are often stillborn. With a snub nose and bulging eyes, which made him always appear to be staring, he was unattractive by conventional standards. He served as a hoplite, a heavily armed soldier in the Athenian army, and fought bravely in several important battles. Unlike many of the thinkers of his time, he did not travel to other cities in order to pursue his intellectual interests. Socrates' personality was in some ways closely connected to his philosophical outlook. He was remarkable for the absolute command he maintained over his emotions and his apparent indifference to physical hardships. Corresponding to these personal qualities was his commitment to the doctrine that reason, properly cultivated, can and ought to be the all-controlling factor in human life. Thus he has no fear of death, he says in Plato's Apology, because he has no knowledge of what comes after it, and he holds that, if anyone does fear death, his fear can be based only on a pretense of knowledge. The Assumption 37. The 100 Most Influential Philosophers of All Time 7. An Artist's Representation of Socrates Center in Four Suicide. Halton. Archive slash Getty images underlying this claim is that once one has given sufficient thought to some matter, one's emotions will follow suit. Fear will be dispelled by intellectual clarity. Similarly, according to Socrates, if one believes upon reflection that one should act in a particular way, then necessarily one's feelings about the act in question will accommodate themselves to one's belief one will desire to act in that way. It follows that once one knows what virtue is, it is impossible not to act virtuously. Anyone who fails to act virtuously does so because he incorrectly identifies virtue with something it is not. Socrates' conception of virtue as a form of knowledge explains why he takes it to be of the greatest importance to seek answers to questions such as what is courage? And what is piety? If we could just discover the answers. 31 7. Socrates said to these questions, we would have all we need to live our lives well. Another prominent feature of the personality of Socrates, one that often creates problems about how best to interpret him, is to use the ancient Greek term, his arona. Although this is the term from which the English word irony is derived, there is a difference between the two. To speak ironically is to use words to mean the opposite of what they normally convey, but it is not necessarily to aim at deception for the speaker may expect and even want the audience to recognize this reversal. In contrast for the ancient, Greeks Arona meant dissembling a user of Arona is trying to hide something. This is the accusation that is made against Socrates several times in Plato's works though never in Xenophon's. His Arona may even have lent support to one of the accusations made against him that he corrupted the young. For if Socrates really did engage in Arona, and if his youthful followers delighted in and imitated this aspect of his character, then to that extent he encouraged them to become dissembling and untrustworthy, just like himself. Socrates in the Dialogues of Plato Most scholars do not believe that every Socratic discourse of Plato was intended as a historical report of what the real Socrates said word for word on some occasion. What can reasonably be claimed about at least some of these dialogues is that they convey the gist of the questions. Socrates asked the ways in which he typically responded to the answers he received and the general philosophical orientation that emerged from these conversations. There is a broad consensus among scholars, however, 
that in Plato's early dialogues in which Socrates insists that he does not have satisfactory answers to the questions. 7. The 100 most influential philosophers of all time 732 he poses questions such as what is courage? What is self-control? And what is piety? Plato was attempting to convey the views of the historical Socrates. In the middle and late dialogues in which Socrates does offer systematic answers to such questions, Plato was using the character of Socrates to present views that were largely his own though they were inspired by his encounter with the historical Socrates and were developed using Socratic methods of inquiry. The portrait of Socrates in all of the dialogues in which he appears the laws is the single exception, is fully consonant with that given in the Apology. A dialogue purported to be Socrates' speech at his trial for impiety in 399 BC. In that work, Socrates insists that he devotes his life to one question only, how he and others can become good human beings, or as good as possible. The questions he asks others, and discovers that they cannot answer, are posed in the hope that he might acquire greater wisdom about just this subject. Socratic method in modern usage is a name for any educational strategy that involves cross-examination of students by their teacher. However, in the method used by Socrates and the conversations recreated by Plato, Socrates describes himself not as a teacher but as an ignorant inquirer, and the series of questions he asks are designed to show that the principal question he raises, for example, what is piety, is one to which his interlocutor has no adequate answer. Typically, the interlocutor is led by a series of supplementary questions to see that he must withdraw the answer he at first gave to the principal question because that answer falls afoul of the other answers he has given. This method employed by Socrates is a strategy for showing that the interlocutor's several answers do not fit together as a group thus revealing the interlocutor's poor grasp of the concepts under discussion. 33-7. Socrates 7. The interlocutor having been refuted by means of premises he himself has agreed to is free to propose a new answer to Socrates' principal question.